Evidences of Evolution Evolution Enormous number of organisms exist on the earth. Many of these at present have large number of common features which provide evidences in favor of organic evolution. These features help in tracing evolutionary relationship between organisms. Evolution is a fact that life has changed through time. In nature, the characteristics of species keep on changing and new species keep on evolving. Evidences in favor of a common descent of living things have been discovered by scientists working in a variety of fields over many years. These evidences have been divided into different categories. Some of the important categories in which evolutionary evidences can be divided are morphological and anatomical evidences, embryological evidences, paleontological evidences. Here we will learn about each of them. Morphological and anatomical evidences. These are based on the similarities in the external and internal features of the different kinds of organisms. These features are homologous organs, analogous organs, vestigial organs. Homologous organs The organs that perform different functions in different species but have similar basic structure and similar embryonic origin are called homologous organs. For example, the forelimb of a frog, wing of a bird, paddle of a whale, and arm of a man. All of them have same origin and same structure. They are structurally similar and made up of the same bones humerus, radius, ulna, metacarpals, carpals and phalanges. Why these organs differ in form and function? Because these animals are living in different habitats and the organs have to perform different functions. In frog, the homologous organs, that is forelimbs, perform leaping movement. In bird, the homologous organs, that is wings, are meant for flying movement. In whale, the homologous organs, that is paddles, are used for swimming movement. In man, arms are used for various functions like holding of objects, expressing the desired action, etc. But the basic similarity in the forelimbs of these different vertebrates indicate that all these organisms had a common ancestral group means they all evolved from a common ancestor who had five-digited limb. Analogous organs The organs which are quite different in fundamental structure and embryonic origin but perform same function are called analogous organs. The wings of an insect and a bird both perform action of flying but the wing of insect is a fold of membrane whereas wing of a bird is made up of feathers and skin supported by bones. 
the similarity of these organs is due to adaptation in flying rather than to inheritance from a common ancestor. Similarly, wings of a bat and wings of a bird both look similar but actually they are not. The only similarity is that both are adapted for flying. Evolution by Stages Here we see an example of evolution in eyes by stages. Complex system of vision we see today has evolved in stages in different organisms. If we start looking at this system from simple to complex, prokaryotic organism like euglena had also photoreceptors present in its cell that could detect light. Eye is a complex organ of sight in animals. Planaria, commonly known as flatworm, has simple eyes. Still they ensure its survival. From this basic design, more complex structure evolved in different organisms. For example, eyes of octopus, insects, fish, horses, etc. are of different structures and also have separate evolutionary origin. To conclude, eyes in all these organisms are analogous structures which have developed step by step as per the requirement to adapt due to changed environmental conditions of different animals. Vestigial organs The organs which are non-functional and reduced in an organism are called vestigial organs. But these organs were well developed and performed functions in ancestors. The organs become functionless when the animals enter into new habitat or when their function is taken up by another organ. For example, the vermifor appendix present as an outgrowth of the large intestine. Nictitating membrane in the eye and coccyx, small bony structure present as tailbone in human beings, all these are vestigial organs. The vermifor appendix has been found to be functional among the herbivorous ruminant mammals. Similarly, the nictitating membrane is functional in birds and provides protection to the eyes but in human beings it is represented as a small fold of skin in the extreme corner of the eye. Coccyx, commonly known as tailbone, is functional in other many vertebrates but rudimentary in humans. Rudimentary existence of vestigial organs explains that these organs were fully developed, functional and necessary in our ancestral forms. However, these are gradually disappearing in the living forms due to some changes in the lifestyle. Embryological Evidences The embryological evidences also show support to organic evolution. Embryology refers to the study of the development of an embryo from fertilized egg to a young one. When embryological study was done, striking similarities were found between the developmental stages of different animals. All multicellular organisms begin their life as a single-celled stage, namely zygote. It undergoes multiple division to produce the first embryo called morula. It develops into a single-layered second embryo called blastula. 
blastula stage develops into next stage called gastrula. This stage of embryo develops into adult after passing several more stages. On observing the changes taking place during development in many organisms, it shows that every multicellular organism passes through these stages. The early embryos of fish, tortoise, bird and human resemble with each other very closely. But later on, full-grown embryos pass through different stages and lead to the formation of specialized features in each organism. These post-embryonic stages of development make them entirely different in shape and structures. But the similarity of early embryos tells that these animals have common ancestors. Paleontology The branch of biology which deals with the study of extinct organisms that are now available only in the form of fossils is called paleontology. The study of fossils indicates the structural features of organisms that existed then and by comparing it with the existing forms, we get a clear indication as to how evolution has taken place. An entire organism or part of its body may have become buried in the deeper sediments of the earth, resulting in the formation of fossils. So fossils are traces of animals that are found deeply embedded in the solid rock. Normally, hard parts like spicules, setae, chitinous exoskeleton, shells, spiny exoskeleton, scales, bones, feathers, teeth and hair of past lived organisms were preserved as fossils. The evolution of life appeared from simple to complex, proved through fossils also. Paleontological Evidences by arranging the fossils in the order in which they appeared on earth, many fossil series have been established. Such series demonstrate as to how various forms of life have changed gradually over a period of millions of years. As a result, the evolution of a number of animals such as horse, camel and elephant has been clearly understood. Plenty of fossil evidence is now available so as to establish human evolution too. A well-known example of a fossil is the ancient bird Archaeopteryx. It showed a number of features like wings, feathers and beak as seen in the present-day birds. It also showed certain features like presence of teeth, presence of a long tail and scales on the body, characteristics that are seen in reptiles. Thus, Archaeopteryx represents an extinct link between reptiles and birds. The observations provide a clue to the evolution of a bird from its reptilian ancestor. Theories of Evolution Evolution is the change in the inherited traits of a population through successive generations. Over the course of time, this process results 
in the origin of new species from existing ones. Studies done by a number of biologists have suggested that the process of evolution is responsible for the many diverse life forms in the world. Evolutionary history of species has been described as a tree with many branches arising from a common descent. Evolution refers to all the changes of life on earth from its very beginning to the diversity today. Many theories have been put forward by various scientists to explain the evolution of organisms. Lamarckism It is the name given to the theory proposed by Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, the French zoologist. It is also known as the theory of inheritance of acquired characters. Lamarck believed that any particular part of the body that is put into more frequent use has a tendency to develop stronger and better while any part of the body which is put into less or no use has a tendency to gradually disappear. Thus, by a differential use and disuse of various body parts during its lifespan, an organism would change to some extent and acquire some new characters. According to Lamarck, the characters acquired by an organism are transmitted by heredity to the next generation. With the result, after many generations, the changes get accumulated to an extent that the species becomes modified into a new one. For example, giraffes developed their elongated necks and front legs by generations of browsing on high tree leaves. Lamarck also suggested that species don't die out in extinctions. Instead, they change into other species. Similarly, Lamarck interprets the absence of limbs in the snakes as an evolutionary change. He suggested that the ancestors of snakes, which had well-developed limbs, faced the problem of increased predation. In order to protect themselves, snakes started crawling on the ground into crevices and holes. Continuous disuse of limbs resulted in limbs becoming shorter and shorter and finally they disappeared in one generation. So, according to Lamarckism, there are two laws. First, that use or disuse causes structures to develop or lost. Lamarck's second law stated that all such changes were heritable. But we now know that acquired characteristics are not heritable. Lamarckism was later replaced by Darwinism. Darwinism It is also known as the theory of natural selection. Charles Darwin formulated this theory along with another English biologist, Alfred Russell Wallace, in the year 1858. He gave a scientific explanation for the diversity of life as well as the mechanisms of evolutionary changes. From a young age, Darwin disliked school and preferred observing birds and collecting insects to study. In 1831, he joined a five-year scientific expedition on the survey ship HMS Beagle as a naturalist. At this time, most Europeans believed that the world was created by God in seven days as described in the Bible. Darwin also had the same belief. It was in the Galapagos Islands where he noticed 
that each island supported its own form of finch, which were closely related but different in some ways. Darwin started studying the different features like beak size and shape of the finches and found there are 13 different types in all on the Galapagos Islands. This was puzzling since he knew of only one species of this bird on the mainland of South America. He also noted that the beak varieties were associated with diets based on different foods. He concluded that due to overpopulation, the original South American finches migrated the islands and dispersed to different environments. Due to different environmental conditions, the birds had to adapt to survive. Over many generations, they changed anatomically in ways that allowed them to get enough food to survive and reproduce. Subsequently, the trait adapted in each finch due to change in its habitat and environment became permanent. Over several generations, the organisms with new variations became isolated from each other and gave rise to new species. Darwin called this descent with modification. Among the finches that ended up in arid environments, the ones with beaks better suited for eating cactus got more food. As a result, they were in better condition to mate. Similarly, those with beak shape that was better suited to getting nectar from flowers or eating hard seeds in other environments were at an advantage there. In a very real sense, nature selected the best adapted varieties to survive and to reproduce. This process has come to be known as natural selection. Darwin's theory of evolution has some factors based on one another. Overproduction Darwin found that usually organisms produce more number of offspring than the number that can survive. Still, the number of individuals in each species remains nearly constant over long periods. There are certain reasons for that. One is struggle for existence. Darwin suggested that there is always competition between individuals belonging to the same species for sharing food and space. Every individual puts efforts for fulfilling the basic needs such as space for living, food for living, meat for reproduction and also protection from enemies. This competition is known as struggle for existence. Variations the differences that an organism shows from its parents or from its related species are called variations. Variations help an animal to adjust better to its environment. An animal which has developed favorable variation has a better chance of survival. Such individuals survive the struggle for existence while others, less adapted, cannot. This idea came to be known as survival of the fittest. Natural Selection Darwin believed that nature selects only those individuals which have undergone favorable adaptation through the process of natural selection. Darwin has given a detailed explanation of his ideas on evolution in his book on the origin of species by means of natural selection published in 1859. Darwin's theory of natural selection helped to convince most people that life has evolved but there were certain contradictions also. 
Darwin's theory conflicted with religious views that God had made all the animals and plants on earth. According to the theory of natural selection, only the useful organs are selected in the struggle for existence, but in certain animals, some organs have developed, although they are of no use. Example, antlers of deer, tusks of elephant, etc. These organs, instead of providing usefulness to the possessors, offer hindrance in their daily life, but still they exist. Synthetic Theory of Evolution Due to incorporation of genetics, studies of evolution led to a neo-Darwinian theory of evolution that recognized the importance of mutation and variation within a population. Since the development of genetic science, natural selection has been considered as an altered frequency of genes in a population. According to this theory, only genetic changes are inheritable and not the others which are caused due to environment. The changes in genes is possible through several changes like variation in DNA, geographic isolation, etc. So right now, genetic sciences have the capacity to define evolution. It is defined as the sum total of the genetically inherited changes in the individuals who are the members of a population's gene pool. Organic Evolution of Life According to Russian scientist A.I. Oparin and British scientist B.S. Haldane, origin of life took place when Earth evolved and atmospheric conditions were favorable. According to Oparin, the components like hydrogen, water, ammonia, methane and carbon dioxide that prevailed on the Earth interacted chemically and a mixture of biologically important molecules evolved. Oparin suggested that the organic compounds only led to more and more complex molecules like protein, lipids, nucleic acids, etc. These molecules aggregated together to form cell-like spherical structure called coesurvates. Coesurvate means pre-cell stage. These are prebiotic structures. Haldane also had similar ideas about the origin of life. Haldane proposed that the primordial sea served as a vast chemical laboratory powered by solar energy. The atmosphere was oxygen free and the combination of carbon dioxide, ammonia and ultraviolet radiation gave rise to a host of organic compounds. The sea became a hot dilute soap containing large populations of organic monomers and polymers. Haldane coined the term prebiotic soup and this supported Oparin's idea of prebiotic cells. Both jointly gave Oparin Halden view of the origin of life. To support Oparin Halden theory, Stanley Lloyd Miller, a Jewish American chemist, conducted an experiment which was known as Stanley Miller's experiment. In 1953, Stanley Miller and Harold C. Urey conducted experiment to explain the origin of life. An equipment known as Miller's apparatus was used. An oxygen-free chamber containing boiling water and methane, ammonia and hydrogen, all primitive gases was used. The gases were subjected to electrical sparks. 
The condition was matched with the conditions present on the earth at the time of origin of life. The chemicals were all sealed inside sterile condition of the apparatus. The heating water induced evaporation. Sparks were fired between the electrodes to stimulate lightning through the atmosphere. It was cooled by using continuous cycle of cold water. After seven days, it was observed that the lower chamber collected amino acids and other complex carbon compounds. These chemicals resembled the building blocks of primitive animals. Evolution of Man It was Charles Darwin who in his book The Descent of Man wrote that man evolved from ape-like ancestors. Physical and genetic similarities show that the modern human species, Homo sapiens, has a very close relationship with another group of primate species, the apes. Humans and the great apes of Africa, chimpanzees and gorillas share a common ancestor that lived between 8 and 6 million years ago. The earliest ancestors of the human species first evolved in Africa and much of human evolution occurred on that continent. Some groups started migration to other land masses from Africa to Asia and then entered Europe. Species of modern humans populated many parts of world much later. For instance, people came to Australia through the island of Indonesia and Philippines. Human evolution is the evolutionary process leading up to the appearance of modern humans.